All right, this is number six from the Calc AB exam, uh, 2011 form B. And it's one where they give you a graph and a function and ask you all kinds of stuff about it. Um, so f of x is defined to be g of x uh, minus the cosine of x over 2. And g of x is that graph given to the right there. Um, so the first thing we're asked to find is this definite integral from negative 2 pi to 4 pi of f of x, which is g of x minus cosine of x over 2 dx. So we're going to break this up because it's really two different functions we're dealing with. So negative 2 pi to 4 pi of g of x dx, which we're just going to do geometry on. And then negative 2 pi to 4 pi of cosine of x over 2 dx. Now we're going to use the fundamental theorem for. Alright, so uh, we have that little region there from negative 2 pi to 0, which uh, is half of a square. So um, 2 pi times 2 pi is 4 pi squared, but we only want half of it. Then we have this triangle which is half of a rectangle, which has uh, 2 pi and 4 pi as its sides, so 8 pi squared, but we only get half of that. Which means the definite integral from negative 2 pi to 4 pi of g of x is just 6 pi squared by adding those. Minus, now um, you could do a u substitution here, or you could just know that there's supposed to be a 1 half, so a 2. So we get um, 2, and then the antiderivative cosine is sine of x over 2. And then that's going to be evaluated at negative 2 pi and 4 pi. Um, and then something really nice happens because when we plug in the bounds here, we end up with uh, negative 2 and then the quantity sine of uh, 4 pi over 2 is 2 pi. And then minus and then the sine of negative pi because negative 2 pi over 2 is negative pi. Um, but both of those are 0. So we end up with just 6 pi squared. All right, so that's part A. Um, in part B, we're asked to find critical points, and this is annoying, um, but we'll do it. So there's f of x, and again, we're going to need the graph of g. Um, so f prime, we know, is g of x, uh, g prime of x, rather, and then plus one half sine of x over 2. And, all right, so critical points. That's when f prime is either uh, zero or undefined. So let's deal with undefined right away. Because if you look at the graph of f of x, uh, g of x rather, you can tell immediately that at zero it is not differentiable. So f prime will be undefined at x equals zero because g prime of zero does not exist. Uh, now we need to deal with f prime of x being equal to zero. And to do that, we need to figure out g prime. So on the interval from negative 2 pi to zero, g prime is just one because it's a line uh, with a slope of one. And then on 0 to 4 pi, g prime is just negative 1 half, because it, again, is linear, and you can just find that slope by looking. So we get two different things. Um, for x less than 0, we have f prime of x equal to um, g prime is 1, and then plus 1 half sine of x over 2. Um, but if you think about the range of that function, so you're at 1, and you can go up 1 half and down 1 half, you're never going to get to zero, so it doesn't ever equal zero, so no critical points from there. Uh, so let's look at the other side. When x is greater than zero, f prime of x is, um, well, g prime now is negative one half, and then plus one half sine of x over two. Um, so we need that to be equal to zero, and that leads us to sine of x over two being equal to one. And then if you think about the unit circle, the only place sine is equal to 1 is at um, pi over 2, which mean that, means that x must be equal to pi. Um, and that's the only value between uh, negative 2 pi and 4 pi for sure. I mean, there are more values, but uh, not on the interval we're looking. Um, and then to summarize for whoever's grading this thing, critical points of f of x are at x equals 0 and at x equals pi. All right, so that was a lot of work. Thankfully, part C is not a lot of work. So for part C, we're given this accumulation function, and we're asked to find its derivative. So this is the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So h prime of x is going to be g evaluated at that upper bound, so g of 3x, times the derivative of the upper bound, so times 3. So to find h prime of negative pi over 3, all I have to do is substitute in negative pi over 3. So uh, 3 times negative pi over 3 is negative pi, and then times 3. Um, so now what I need to do is I need to figure out g of negative pi. Uh, if you look at the graph, you can tell that it's pi, or if you want to do more work, you could work that out, but it's definitely pi. 
Um, so we end up with 3 pi, and that's the final answer, and that's the entire question. Hope you found this helpful, and good luck.